Um, hi, good evening, everyone. Thank you for that uh, overwhelming introduction. Um, typical lawyer, I've still got my papers in front of me. And uh, I think just um, what Brett just said is, it reminds me of a very interesting cartoon that um, I saw this morning. And it was a, a client sitting with a lawyer, and the lawyer said to the client, do you want my honest legal opinion, or do you want the truth? So um, I think that hopefully today I'll be able to give you a balance of both. And also just to uh, break this all down into some bite-sized chunks and to understand some of the legal issues that surround contracting in the cloud. Um, so they didn't give me the clicker. Okay. Right, let's see how this goes. Okay. So just to give you an idea of what um, I'm going to be looking at, just to give you an idea of some regulatory developments, um, the South African position, where we are, and to look at some international trends and where, we, uh, where we're going to be taking some guidance. Okay, so just some uh, regulatory developments. Um, I think what's important is that in South Africa, at the moment, we have absolutely no legislation, no guidelines, no codes of conduct anywhere to regulate cloud services and cloud service providers. Now, where this has been interesting, and uh, you talk about the banks, you talk about the financial institutions, um, what you see and the effect of this is that there's a reticence and a, a, a nervousness to go into the cloud on the basis that the question is, from a legal point of view, how am I going to be protected? What regulates me? And I've been saying for a long time, there's a huge opportunity right now for some of our regulators uh, FSB from the banking sector to actually step in right now and put together and issue some directives, some codes of conduct, some guidelines that I think will give a lot more impetus to the cloud environment and to using the cloud in South Africa. But as I say, at the moment, there's nothing on the table. Internationally, there, there's been a, a lot of activity, major activity um, in all the different jurisdictions, huge activity in the EU. Um, they're probably at the forefront of looking at this issue. Very recently, the US has finally come to the table on it, but I'll, I'll talk to you about that. All right, so let's just talk through some of the, the key issues. Um, now, as I said to you, what I'm pretty much looking at today is where you're going into a public cloud environment. When you are in a private cloud environment or even a hybrid situation, you've got more scope to negotiate. The relationship is closer and you are able to engage with the provider and have direct discussions. So this is a situation where you are going to, looking into going to a public cloud or possibly a, an environment where you, there isn't a, 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 an ability to, to have a, a negotiation process. So what this becomes then is it's more about understanding what are your risks. What do you need to look for? What do you need to be aware of? And go through an almost a due diligence or an audit process. So the first thing is, you need to understand what's out there. You need to do an assessment of the providers, what they offer you by way of security, by way of data transmission, by way of availability. And you need to look at that quite carefully. Major, major issue um, that is out there, and that is how is my information protected when it sits in the cloud? Who's looking after it? Who's got access to it? The question is, when you are looking at a cloud in a jurisdiction which doesn't have this legislation in place, what protections have you got? What comfort do you have around how your data is protected? And that's also where you need to look at the privacy policies and procedures that are, the providers are offering and to understand what your risk is. Just be very briefly to touch on it. The, the closest South Africa at the moment is coming to looking at, to, to protecting personal information is what is known as POPI or the PPI, the Protection of Personal Information Bill. Very briefly, it's still a bill. Um, we are currently on draft five. Um, we don't know when it's going to be passed into law. It was meant to be 2012. But on Monday, the commission announced, well, not publicly announced, but we had a discussion with them. and. 
In light of uh, developments in the EU and with the US finally coming out with their proposed framework for data privacy, it may delay things further so that we can align ourselves with what's happening in the EU. So essentially, um, if you are a cloud provider um, and you are anyway, in any way processing personal information, I suggest that you do become aware of what this piece of legislation says about that, what your obligations are, because the, the specific sections in the legislation around security and privacy um, are not going to change substantially. They, they're fairly uncontested at the moment, so the basic principles are there, and it's important that you become aware of them. Next major issue, security. Again, the Legis uh, Protection of Personal Information Act um, th three sections which are specifically dedicated to security and what security processes and procedures need to be put in place and need to be complied with by persons who process in any way personal information. Um, very clearly dealt with in, in the pending legislation. F sections which very much mirror what is happening internationally. Very important issue, cross-border data transfer. You know, the question is always, can you transfer data out of South Africa? Yes, you can. There may be some consent issues that you need to get around. If you're in a regulated environment, the healthcare sector, the banking sector, there is some legislation which tells you how you can deal with personal information. But nobody says, well, what happens when I have to bring it back in? What happens when I want to terminate the service? How do I get my information back into South Africa? And that's where there are some issues because a lot of the international jurisdictions say that personal information can't come back to a jurisdiction who doesn't have adequate data protection laws. And that's where South Africa falls, falls into the gap. We don't have those laws in place. And so it has an impact on cross-border data transfer. Um, in the EU, a recommendation has just come out, which is very interesting. And what it says is that if you process personal data of an EU citizen, irrespective of where you are, you are going to have to comply with certain EU directives around how to deal with that personal information. So as a data processor, as someone dealing with information, you need to, you may have to eventually say, do I hold any information belonging to an EU citizen? And if I do, you need to understand what your obligations are. Um, so I just think in summarising, um, the issue really is, you know, a lot of people say, well, would you put your information in the cloud? Would you advise your clients to put information in the cloud? And the answer is yes. I think that um, the majority of the providers, the big providers out there, have got fantastic security in place and they know what they're doing. But again, the point really with all of this is ask questions, be aware and just have knowledge. Thanks very much.